Hey, what's up everybody? Fred Minnick here. And today I want to go over what were my five biggest surprises of my top 100 in 2023, which was basically two weeks ago. So the top 100 is my annual tasting uh, that I've been doing since I essentially separated from Whiskey Advocate and kind of went out on my own as a critic. And um, uh, every year I rank my my favorite uh, whiskeys that, that excite me. And I, what I do is I get a pool of 100 uh, American whiskeys and then I will taste them blind. Now over the years, I've done it over a course of three days. Um, I've done it um, uh, one time, I did it over the course of a week. Uh, this year I decided to do it all in one sitting. And it really had a lot to do with that had a lot to do with you know my own personal schedule but i also taste a lot and in spirits competitions we can taste anything from 100 to 200 uh and one year i tasted 300 in a single day those may not be 300 products but they will be 300 different tastes uh so i have a, a lot of experience doing tastings at that level so i knew my my palate could handle it I also have a lot of measures to make sure my palate is is okay. And when I when I got when I got through the list, I was like, yeah, this is this is pretty solid, you know? I mean, this is where a lot of these uh I felt would would fall. However, there were five major surprises for me. You can see the full top 100 the list itself in the description uh or if you want to watch the 5-hour live stream um you're welcome too it's on this youtube channel but i will be cutting it up over the course of the next few months and uh having individual reviews out there so at number five number five the the number five the the fifth biggest surprise for me was where journeyman corsets uh whiskey and whips finished now this one best in show two years in a row at my spirits competition, the American Spirits Council of Tasters, and it came in number 99, 99. When I saw that, I was like, whoa, whoa, what happened here? Like, I mean, uh, I, I I went back and saw my notes and, you know, frankly, I could not believe it. I could not believe that's where I finished. Um, I have every time I've ever tasted that blind, uh, knowingly, it has rocked my palate. It's like knocked my socks off. But um, on December 20th, it did not. So that was a big shocker for me. Uh, number four, that Larceny, the Barrel Proof series, won both second and third. So C923 won second, and uh, A123 finished uh, third. Now the B series was not in in this flight. I did not. I know that was a fan favorite for a lot of people. Many people put that in the comment section of when uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, but it was not. It didn't hit for me. You know, there's that's just it. Like I'm an individual critic. This is my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna like things you don't like, and that's just kind of how it goes. Like a lot of people like Thirteenth Colony, uh, Double Oak. That didn't even make my my list. It was probably on the on the fifth, last fifty out, but. It was, uh, it was not, it didn't make it. So, um, you know, but the fact is that I tasted, I tasted through all 100 of them and the two Larceny products uh, were neck and neck to win it all. And th that has never happened to me before, never. Um, but I, I do, I do think it's interesting and I, quite a few people mentioned this is like, my palate was definitely driven toward that style and that night. And um, the fact that I, I clung to two of them all night that were so close together, I think does show like, you know, what my palate was feeling. And if you go through the list, you know, you see a lot of of, of similar styles in the representation of, of the higher rank. So uh, that one, that, but that did, it still, it still surprised me nonetheless. Uh, something I did different this year, and this is my third uh, surprise of my top 100, is that how well uh, Everyday Bourbons did in my in my top 100. Came in 42nd, so that's a 90 proof Everyday Bourbon. Uh, Michter's US1 came in 52nd, 
and Old Forester 100 came in 61st. Now, the difference uh, between, and also one other, uh, I had one other everyday bourbon in here. Uh, let me find it, let me find it, let me find it. Rare Breed, Rare Breed came in at 55. So the way that these, um, these brands got into the, the tasting this year, I changed my, I changed my, with what I allowed in uh, for my top 100. Something won one of my blind bourbon taste offs, uh, which is a, an event series that I do in the public. Um, I brought it forward and those products had won uh, major tastings and Green River did really, was one of my highest scores in the Ascots. So that, uh, that, that carried through. So, but the, the amount of products that they beat, and those are very, very solid rankings. It, it really did surprise me like how these everyday bourbons were beating, um, beating major allocated, major allocated products. For example, all of those, um, all of those beat the Willet eight year black bottle. Okay. So all the ones I just mentioned, Beat, beat the Willet eight year. Okay, so that's that's one right there for you. That a beat. Uh, let's see what else. Some other big names for you. I just I got a new setup now and I just knocked over some bottles. Oops. Um, they beat uh, Old Man Winter, which came in at seventy seven. That's a hundred fifty eight dollar product. They beat uh, Remus Gatsby. Uh, that's a two hundred dollar product. Came in uh, that came in at seventy five. And let's see, so, <laughs> that's my number. That's I'll mention some of the other ones later on, uh, but they're some of my other big surprises coming up. But they beat a lot of uh, a lot of majors, and even uh, uh, Michter's beat it its own in the Michter's Rye Toasted, which didn't make my top five. But you know, the Rye Toasted, I love that when I tasted that for the first time, I was like, oh my god, this is so good. Uh, but that came in at 90, and Jack Daniels 10 year old. 97 proof, $70, uh, allocated, hard to get. Also one of my favorites, a shocker that it only finished 93rd, but yeah. Um, and uh, my second, my number two big surprise is that, <laughs> and this is a pretty, this is pretty uh, crazy, pretty crazy. Again, I talked about like how, how the two Larsen is finished in the top two and how my palate was clinging toward that style. So I was clinging toward like big, bold, juicy flavors um, in the palate. Four stags finished in the top 15, four. So crazy to me that they uh, let all, that four of them, the, the four in the tasting uh, finished that high. So at number 15 was the Buffalo Chase Antique Collection stag. And you know what? I love that. That was that was delicious. Number eleven was the Stag Junior, and I refuse to not call it Junior because it, uh, we need some separation of what to call these because we got so many Stags now. <laughs> so I think Stag Junior is still a is a is an easy way to separate them. But at eleven, uh, Stag Junior twenty three B at eight, Stag Junior twenty two A, and my winner of the whole tasting was the Prohibition Old Stag. And that was sublime, absolutely sublime. I, I loved it in, in every way, shape, or form. But, and this is my biggest shocker of the entire, so my number one biggest shocker of this entire uh, tasting is that Maker's Mark Cellar Age finished at 84. Now, I want to put this into perspective here. If you go back and watch my original video, of Michter's Cellar Aged. I pretty much um, had a food gasm in my mouth. I nearly cried talking about my connection to it and how I had been pushing Bill Samuels to come out with a 12 year old cash drink. Um, and you know, that, you know, Bill Samuels is a mentor of mine and like, it was just like this whole back and forth and all that. And at the time, when I did that video, I said, hey, I'm gonna put this in blind tastings. We'll see how it does. But you know, I had a very emotional connection to that bourbon and that's, it's going to happen. I'm only human. I can't help that. But I separate, I separate my personal feelings from, from a brand, uh, or from anything when I do a blind tasting. And I, this was my front runner. I, I thought the maker seller aged, um, was going to win it all when I was going into it. And furthermore, in the fact that the two larcenies, which are weeded bourbons, 
did so well, that tells you that my palate was not close to a weeded bourbon profile, even though the journeyman, the journeyman wheat whiskey didn't do so hot. But I just, I, I, I'm in this like, a state, I'm still kind of in this like state of shock that it did so poorly. Cause I've tasted it again. I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. I'm like, how did it only finish 84th? So it is insane to me that the makers uh, cellar aged uh, finished uh, so close to the last. And, you know, again, those everyday bourbons beat it. And it, it is a blind tasting and it is a hundred of them. And it is something that I do. And I am a professional. I've been doing this for, for a long time. And this happens. I remember a year at San Francisco World Spirits Competition where I didn't medal two of the Buffalo Trace Antique collections. Uh, I didn't medal uh, the Pappy, the Pappy line. I mean, this happens when you do tastings. And sometimes, just like in the NCAA tournament, just like in football, upsets happen. And I'm just one palate. If this were a spirits competition, my scores would go up against, you know, 50 other scores and you would get the comp compilation of all those scores. But looking at the my notes and and, uh, and the rankings here, I still ve feel very, very good about my, uh, my top 100. In fact, I would say this was probably my, my best year and I'm probably going to do it again straight through like that versus uh, over the course of three days. Uh, simply because I can I can knock it out. I felt very good about it. And also from a production standpoint, I invested heavily on, on this year's production. So that was live. And it was, um, you know, the, the crew that I had uh, filming me also films like Grammy Award winning artists. So, I mean, there's an investment from me to make this look cool and awesome and have it be an event. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but I would like to know what you thought should have finished higher or what surprised you and then you found it out in the wild and you're like, oh, you know what? That's good. But um, that's my that's my top uh, my top five shockers in my top 100. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a happy new year. And if you're not a subscriber already, click that subscribe button. Also, come check us out over at Club Marzipan. This is my member community and they get to learn about my top 100 before anybody. That's gonna do it, y'all. Be safe out there. And remember, it's not about what you're drinking, it's who you're drinking it with. And maybe that'll be my new tagline this year. Cheers, y'all.